Hello, everyone, and welcome to the StarCityGames.com Philadelphia Open Weekend Quarterfinals. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, we are here in the booth. Nick Miller, of course, down there in the feature match area as we get ready to watch our first quarterfinal match. It'll be between Christopher Giuliano and Gerard Fabiano. In fact, versus Jeskai Stoneblade. Giuliano's going to start things off here with a Noble Hierarch via a windswept heath into a tropical island. We head back over to Gerard now, his first turn of the game. This Jeskai Stoneblade deck has a lot of removal, a lot of permission, yep. and has the way to close the game pretty quickly with Stoneforge Mystic and Batter Skull, or of course, Umazawe's Jite. Tundra found via Polluted Delta is going to tie the game up. Let's see what Gerard wants to play here. He's going to play a Ponder. A little bit of deck manipulation here as he takes a look at the top three cards. And it looks like he's happy to keep with the Ponder. Fabiano will draw. We'll head back over to Christopher Giuliano, who will draw a card for his turn. Gerard uh, decks historically are just a heap of removal yes. and card advantage. It's been kind of the same story for, I don't know, however many years now. A lot of them. <laughs> well, we have seen this start from Giuliano earlier in the day. A turn one Noble Hierarch into a turn two Ink Moth Nexus and a Sylvan Library. So normally you'd expect to see an Infect threat there like a Blighted Agent or maybe a Glistener Elf. Giuliano, at least underneath the camera, the draws have been a little bit unkind. No Blighted Agent or Glistener Elf here. But Sylvan Library against this kind of deck, not too bad. It's not bad. Not shabby at all. I mean, there is still the question of can Giuliano win a protracted game even if he's drawing extra cards against all the removal that Fabiano has, but uh, if the game ends up being grindy about card advantage, it can help Giuliano keep his head above water. Let's head back over to Christopher Giuliano as Fabiano just played a Misty Rainforest. Giuliano is going to resolve his Sylvan Library trigger, so he gets to take a look at the top three cards. He'll always get to take one with him, and if he wants to pay for life, he can take an additional card. So a lot of the time, we call that in Legacy clearing the top of your deck with the Sylvan mm -hmm. Library, paying eight life, which is a lot to get two new cards, but you don't want to have to keep looking at them. Fortunately for Giuliano, he has a wooded foothills here that he can sacrifice and shuffle those cards he doesn't want anymore away. So as Giuliano does sacrifice that wooded foothills, of course, that goes on the stack. Gerard does have the ability to respond, and Gerard may respond here. We will see. And now he will allow that to resolve. Will Fabiano and Giuliano is going to search up another copy of Tropical Island. And we'll see what comes next here. This is a ponder. Ponder will resolve, so Giuliano's going to take a look at the top three cards here, and we'll, he'll see if he'd like to keep them or not. Of course, with Ponder, if you don't want to, you're free to shuffle and draw a mystery card. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as we get results for our other matches and other games and matches within this match, we'll, of course, let you know. I know a lot of curious viewers watching to see how their friends and teammates are doing so when we have updates, we'll, of course, let you know. And I do implore you to follow at SCG Tour on Twitter because Nick Miller will be updating things there as well. As Giuliano is going to keep with the ponder. So we will go back over to Fabiano, who's going to brainstorm now. Mm-hmm. And with the fetch land on the battlefield, this will allow him to make it a pretty darn good brainstorm. And as Gerard continues to get things set up so he doesn't get killed by some sort of infect creature. Well, Gerard works on that. We'll work on this. Let you know that Zachary Keeney has won his match against Daryl Errors. That was Storm in Modern against Amulet Titan in Modern. And you had a feeling that one was going to be pretty one-sided. So it goes. Yeah. <laughs> that one seemed like it was going to be pretty easy. A very challenging matchup. So Daryl Ayer's team behind the eight ball right now. Let's go back over to Christopher Giuliano now, who with the Sylvan Library, he's going to be able to find the cards that he's looking for, those protection spells like Vines of the Vastwood and potentially Blossoming Defense. 
I'll be able to find the big pump spells like Invigorate and become immense. And some cards like Force of Will, too, to give him a little bit of protection. But you have to be careful when you're playing against Fabiano's deck because it does have so much removal and so much permission of its own. This will be a ponder from Giuliano. We'll take a look at the top handful of cards. He's uninterested in those, so he will shuffle away. And not only does that allow him to see a new card from the ponder, but it also lets him clear the cards that he wasn't interested in with the Sylvan Library. So now Giuliano will draw a card. And that'll be another copy of Ink Moth Nexus. Looks like he's going to fire up the first one. In combination with Noble Hierarch, this will be an attack for two. One thing, Patrick, we learned, especially at that Grand Prix in New Jersey where Tom Ross played against Brian Braun Duin in the finals, BBD eventually the champion, it's not good to try to fight Infect inside the combat step. No, your, your best bet is take a hit, let them do whatever they're going to do in combat. If they go for a kill, obviously you need to respond. If they're happy to just nickel and dime you a little bit, take the hit, don't engage in combat, and do some stuff at the end of the turn while the Nexus is still active or while their creature is still on the battlefield or whatever the case may be. The worst thing that you can do is try to play into them and have them go, okay, counter spell, now you're tapped out, and here's a bunch of zero mana, one mana pump spells and kill you. Yeah. And Fabiano knows this, so he's going to take the hits if they're not lethal and then try to whittle down Giuliano's board at the end of turn. Yeah, use that life total or that infect total as a resource. Right. Because until you actually have 10, doesn't matter all that much. So now Fabiano is going to play a copy of Unexpectedly Absent, a card we don't see very often. One of those commander cards, I believe. So we'll get that up. White, white X, put a non-land X from the top. I think that's what it does. Instant, too. White, white X, yeah. Yeah. It's very Gerard to play one of that in a deck. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it takes a lot of players by surprise as well. Yeah. Fabiano going to sacrifice a flooded strand to search up a land here. He'll get himself a Tundra. And now, you see with Unexpectedly Absent, there is that put target non-land permanent into its owner's library just beneath the top X cards of that library. It doesn't read the cleanest. Just I beneath is a great template. Yeah, but that is what it does. Here is Jace the Mind Sculptor. And now this is interesting, right? Because Fabiano has tapped out to play Jace the Mind Sculptor in the face of Ink Moth Nexuses? Yep. I and mean, a full hand? We're going we're gonna to see. I mean, I, I think that Giuliano would have been happy to play just, you know, if you're going to sit back and hang back, I'm going to do the same for a little while. Now with Jace on the battlefield, really all Giuliano has to play around is Force of Will. And Gerard's already at two in fact. I mean, he has to have a pretty stocked hand to be able to survive this if Giuliano... You know, he's been sculpting his hand with cantrips and still in library for a little while. Well, I already caught a glimpse of Giuliano's hand, and he's moving pretty fast right now. I'll tell you what, as he sacrifices the Misty Rain for it's going to search up a land here, I'm sure, to activate an Ink Moth Nexus. There's a third tropical island, plenty of mana to work with, and now the question is how many Force Wills do I have to beat? Hmm. Well, Christopher Giuliano, is it time to kill Gerard Fabiano? That's the question I have to ask, as it looks like he wants to fire up an Ink Moth Nexus, and I think he may want to do it actually with Ink Moth Nexus. There we are. So he has the appropriate amount of colored mana. Here he comes to Exalted. Fabiano's basically giving him the green light and saying, if, you, if you've got stuff to do, <laughs> you can go ahead and do it, buddy. I don't really have a lot going on here. This will be a copy of Become Immense. That's plus six, plus six. Of course, two power. There on the Ink Moth Nexus. And now, Fabiano, it's time to cast a Force of Will. I mean, to tap out, for, you know, he's got to at least try to keep up appearances here a little bit. <laughs> All right. Good. He's got something. Yeah. I'm not going to believe that Gerard has nothing. Gerard's a little too good to have nothing in a spot like this. Now, Giuliano does have a copy of Brainstorm. And I'm going to check his deck list here because this would be a timely time for days. But it looks like Become Immense is going to be countered, so perhaps it's time to move towards Invigorates. Let's see what this is. That's a Vines of the Vastwood. 
And this in conjunction with Invigorate is lethal, so we'll see if Gerard has another Force of Will plus blue card. Giuliano does have Daze, and apparently so does Gerard. So Gerard will cast a Daze. Giuliano is happy to pay for the Daze. Remember, players who have access to each other's deck list at this stage of things. Let me, let, me get, let me guess for Gerard. One Daze? Two. Two, two Dazes. Gerard loves a tricky one of, so I thought it may have just been one day. Looks like Gerard has quite a bit here if he's still mulling this over. Ooh. Oh, the second days. That's going to counter that. Are there two invigorates here? I mean, those are all the days. Well, there's an invigorate. So it looks like six total when it's all said and done here. That's what it looks like. Fabiano's going to go up to eight Infect. And now these Ink Moth Nexuses, Nexi, however you like to go about saying it, they will begin to be very close to lethal now as we're going to head back over to Fabiano, who's on eight Infect at this stage. But it has an active Jace. And that's a big deal. Fabio going to start things off by brainstorming. And while Fabiano does a little bit of brainstorming, we'll let you know that Timothy Giuliano, the mono green Tron player of the Giuliano team, along with Volts, up a game against Peter Ingram. Ingram does have a tough, tough matchup there with his blue white control deck. It's Fabiano done brainstorming, plays a land, will pass the turn back over to Giuliano. Giuliano still with Brainstorm in hand, Sylvan Library in hand as well, because that was placed on top of his deck. He's going to start things off with a Brainstorm, maybe looking for a little protection to go for the win here as he draws three cards, and we'll be put, he will be putting two back, much like Gerard has done the past couple of turns. Now keep in mind, though, the way the board is right now, that the Nexus is individually lethal, an Exalted Trigger plus an attack for one is enough to get Giuliano the first game here, but a lot of cards he has to play around. We're going active. Here's the attack. And there's the Exalted Trigger. A couple of cards in hand there for Giuliano. More cards in hand right now for Fabiano. But right now, Gerard, you got to make the move, not Christopher, because yep. it's a lethal attack. And Giuliano can either pick a fight here if, if Fabiano has uh, ways to respond. Alternatively, if he doesn't want to fight a big fight, fight inside of combat, he doesn't think he can win, he can just play his Sylvan Library post-combat and try to gas back up and go for it the next turn. This will be a Vendillion click. And that's a great blocker in a situation like this. However, that is a daze for Giuliano, and that's the perfect use of a card like that. And Fabiano is beat. So Christopher Giuliano will win game number one here over Gerard Fabiano. In fact, up a game over Jeskai Stoneblade, and you pair that with Timothy Giuliano's win, and Matthew Volt's currently up a game here over Jordan Berkowitz, and it's the team of Giuliano, Giuliano, and Volt. Sounds somewhat like a law firm. Well, they're giving the business right now to Fabiano, Ingram, and Berkowitz as we turn our attention to the sideboard. And we will start with Gerard, who's got three Surgical Extractions, two Blood Moons, two Flusterstorm, two Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, two Pyroblast, two Terminus, and Engineer Explosives, and a Pithing Needle. I think this is a great sideboard for Gerard. I think the Needle, Engineer Explosives, Terminus, Pyroblast, Flusterstorm, and Blood Moon all in play here. Uh, you like the Blood Moons, too? I think they're pretty good. Uh, well, it depends how much he wants to cut. Uh, he's, cause he, he has a ton of cards he can potentially bring in here. I think being able to cut Nexus out of the game is a big deal for Fabiano in this matchup, though. For Christopher Giuliano. Boy, there's a lot of different cards here that Gerard's going to have to try to play around. Two Surgical Extractions, a Flusterstorm, a Submerge, a Hydro Blast, a Force of Will, a Spell Pierce, a Shaper's Sanctuary, probably pretty good in this matchup, along with a Dissenter's Deliverance. A Viridian Corruptor, an Atrus Claim, a Crop Rotation, a Caracas, a Bajuka Bog, and a Graffigger's Cage. Yeah, I, some solid cards here. I think it's kind of sideboard relatively light. The Saber Sanctuary and some blend of the counter spells you can talk me into. I don't mind bringing in the Caracas against a deck that's occasionally trying to block with Vendillion Click, but not a lot to bring in. Well, those are the options there for both players. 
And you see the team of Fabiano, Ingram, and Berkowitz. They've got some real work to do. Backs against the wall in a big way right now. But three great players who have won quite a bit in their Magic career. So we'll see what they can do to maybe scrape together a little bit of a comeback here. While they work on that, we'll talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale one last time here. Where you don't have a ton of time left, but... Just enough to save on playmats and sealed products. Yeah, and make sure tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, to head over to go.starcgames.com slash weekly sale. Check out what items are on sale coming up next week. For a limited time remaining, the category is up to 50% off. Select playmats and sealed product. New Elves versus Inventors. Yeah, you know about that product. For example, yep. Shadows over Innistrad. Dominaria product. <laughs> playmats of various sorts. StarCityGames.com. Ls versus Inventors is nice. On sale. Yeah. That's a nice product. Azuri squares off against Goblin Welder or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's unclear. I really have to take a look at that product list because I don't know what's going on in there. No. I really don't. No. Just saying. Well, we're going to take a moment here to learn a little bit more about Christopher Giuliano, who two years ago made a real run for the Players' Championship, came up a little bit short to the 26-year-old from Upper New York. You know how to say that? Uh, Paul Quag? He just made up places. Probably another place out on Long Island that's just... Four dealerships and Lowe's. <laughs> but I don't know for sure. My phone will reveal all information. He had one open top eight coming into the weekend. This is now his second, along with an invitational top eight on the resume. He's a graduate from that's SUNY. I learned about this. SUNY. That's like a little State University of New York. There you go. Uh, with a mathematics degree and computer science minor. He loves playing recreational sports, especially volleyball. An entire Instagram is dedicated to the food he eats while traveling, which is something I can certainly respect, being a foodie myself. And looking to have a good meal here tonight in Philadelphia. That's Christopher Giuliano, currently up a game with Timothy Giuliano and it Matthew Volz. Looks like it's a little bit north of New York City. Okay. Pope so Dog. in uh, Poughkeepsie, Newburgh, Middleton. So I know Poughkeepsie because there's a, there's, a there's a band I like mm -hmm. from Poughkeepsie. Just Poughkeepsie. So I know that one. Don't. Don't pronounce it like a tourist. Just Poughkeepsie. What do you mean? Well, how did I pronounce pa it? You know, like po it was a little bit too um, enunciated. Poughkeepsie? Is that yeah, bad? just Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. I, didn't, I, didn't, I think I did it right the first time. It's okay. Don't I worry about it. Okay. I'm not worried about it. Kellen Pastor, he won, uh, he won his match against Hovey in the 4-5 matches. So the team of Barkin, Pastor, and Noga currently up a match against Canfield, Hovey, and Barry. Again, make sure you're following at SCG Tour. That's Nick Miller. He's on the case, tweeting away, giving us our results. Fabiano just about ready to go here. Same thing with Christopher Giuliano. As these players are sideboarded up, took a good look at each other's deck list. One of the privileges of making top eight here on the SD Tour. And they will shake and get ready here for the second game. Good sportsmanship between the two. The team, our number three seed of Candy, Keeney, and Turnbull. Well, they're through. You had a feeling that one was going to be pretty quick, and it was. Yes. <laughs> it was. They took care of Dilks, Ayers, and Megalish very, very quickly. So, for Candy, Keeney, and Turnbull, doing very nice. As we get our eyes on this match here, Fabiano with a Volcanic Island and a Ponder he will keep. And we head back over to Christopher Giuliano, who's drawn a copy of Invigorate. He'll very quickly sacrifice a Wooded Foothills, go down to 19, and we'll see where he wants to go from there. And that will resolve. There's a tropical island. And it'll be a noble hierarchy to start. We'll be heading back over to Fabiano here in just a moment. Fabiano will sacrifice a wooded, f excuse me, he'll sacrifice a flooded strand to get a tundra. 
no wooded foothills in Girard stack. That's all Giuliano here this weekend. And now we have an Umazawa Jite. So Fabiano would love to get that online because assuming that he does, it's a very difficult card for Infect to beat. And keep in mind um, that Fabiano has multiple copies of Vendillion Click in his list. So Giuliano has to respect the possibility, even if Fabiano passes the turn with no creatures, that the following turn he could be attacked by something with Jite on it. Giuliano with that Sylvan Library in hand once again. Every time we see him on the camera, it appears as though he's found the library, and I haven't seen a Blighted Agent just yet. But fortunately for him, good card in this matchup. So that is Misty Rainforest. This is that Sylvan Library again. Well, Kellen Pastor already won his match, and another member of his team, and it looks like Barkin won, playing land. So there you go. The team of Barkin, Pastor, and Noga, they're going to move on to the semifinals. Took care of Canfield, Hovey, and Barry. So two matches down. These players aren't messing around. It's what been was, much faster than the Swiss rounds. We were up against the clock, I think, almost every round we covered. Yeah, must have some sort of dinner reservation or something. Who knows? These guys are getting out of here. The craps table calls. Never closes. The man. siren song. It never closes. It's always open. <laughs> the siren song of <laughs> click clack. <laughs> so close. It's my favorite tune. I think I might bet the don't come line tonight. Be the bad guy. Oh yeah, that's it. That, if I were to get in, that's the way to do it. It's an all-time scumbag move. It's one of my favorites. A lot of my earlier, my early uh, broadcasting influences were pro wrestling heels. So going in there and being the bad guy is really appealing. Well, you mentioned Vendillion Click and how that may show up to where a Jite and here it is. Now, will Giuliano counter this spell? I guess that's a good question. Well, he's got to counter the spell or kill one of the two permanents. Or we're done. Doesn't take much. Christopher, we're going to talk to Timothy here, figure out what the best way to move forward is. And it looks like it's going to be Force of Will exiling a Brainstorm. Never feels good to let a Brainstorm go, but if it makes it so that you don't lose the game... I think you might be okay with it. Middle seat. Peter Ingram. Tied it up pretty quickly, all things considered, against Timothy Giuliano. Blue-white control, model green Tron. They'll work their way into a third game. We'll see if we have time to jump that way or not. I'll let you know about that. Number one is seed. That's the team of Oliver Tomiko, Jonathan Rossum, and Ben Reagan. Ben Reagan, he won the Grixis mid-range mirror. So his team currently up a match. As it looks like Fabiano fighting back. Force of will. Removing Jace. However, a spell pierce will take care of the force of will. And now I can tell you that not only did Ben Reagan win his match, but Oliver Tomiko won his. So there you go. The team of Tomiko, Rossum, and Reagan moving on to the semifinals, which means this is our last quarterfinal match, Patrick. They are moving and grooving, my friend. And given the uh, how slow some of these matchups can be, uh, this one's moving pretty fast as well. Yeah, no kidding. Fabiano with a Snapcaster Mage into a Ponder with an Arid Mesa at the ready. How safe does Fabiano feel right now? I guess that's the question. He's already burned through one force of will. Only has two cards in hand. Well, it's not the easiest for Infect to get these permanents off of the battlefield, uh, the Snapcaster Mage or the Jitte. If I'm Giuliano, I'm not sure how good I'm feeling. Got that Snapcaster Mage out there just getting ready to wear that legendary equipment from Betrayers of Kamigawa. Take them all. You just got to dig for an answer. Your life total doesn't matter. Taking a long look here is Giuliano. I spent a lot of games in my childhood paying eight because no one could attack back in the day. <laughs> the creatures were so bad. You didn't mind paying eight for two new cards. No. It's probably the optimal strategy. No one could attack. Just like that other card you showed us earlier where no one no one can attack. That's literally no one can attack. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing more contextually yes. the creatures were so bad. Oh, boy, it's back. 
Is this Arborea? Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, this is this is. I would be surprised if you exclude anti and other kind of like fake designs. Yes. You only count things that one could conceivably play in a real game. This might be the worst design in Magic history. <laughs> and a lot of competition for that. They made they made over ten thousand cards or whatever. They've made quite a few. This card quite is. This is. It's like no one played a game yeah. with it. <laughs> That's a Glistener Elf. All righty. We're heading back over to Gerard Fabiano. I mean, this is the, I guess the hope for here for Giuliano is you trade off with the Snapcaster Mage on your Glistener Elf. And he shoots down your double Hierarchs, but if Fabiano can't find another creature, you play on from there. Hey, it's better than no plan. Gerard looking to help the teammates out a little bit. Will Fabiano attack? Looks like it's going to be a Vines of the Vastwood in response to the equip. Now, Vines is an interesting card because it can target the other player's stuff. Where you, a lot of the effects like this nowadays, you don't see that. It normally says your own creature. This is a hell of a common. <laughs> yeah. <But> this one. <laughs> These interactions come up. Target creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control this turn. If Vines of the Vastwood was kicked, target creature gets plus four, plus four, and so on a turn. So, not just yet, Snapcaster Mage. You hold tight over there. And Gerard wants to take a look one more time at Vines of the Vastwood from Zendikar. That is really bad news for Fabiano. I mean, it, you know, you, you don't want to be in a position where you have to block the Glistener Elf next turn to prevent lethal. Two exalted tri triggers. I mean, the Snapcaster Mage doesn't even trade off. If you no block, you die to an array of things, potentially. Looks like Giuliano is going to now cast a crop rotation, having to sacrifice a tropical island as part of the cost. Will this spell resolve? Looks like it'll be a forceful removing Jace the Mind Sculptor, so the answer is no. Will Giuliano fight back? The answer is Flusterstorm says yes. Yeah, that's three spells, the Flusterstorm, the Crop Rotation, and Gerard's Force of Will. Well, Gerard's only got one card left in his hand, and it looks like Ink Moth Nexus is where Christopher Giuliano wants to go. So keep in mind Giuliano does have a Sylvan Library out there. He's at nine right now. He could pay eight life to draw a couple of cards, and I'm curious to see what the card is in Christopher's hand because he's moving pretty quickly here. Not as quickly as I would say Tom Ross when he knows he's got the kill, but no. some pretty good speed. And Gerard still has a card that could be live, so you can't only go so fast. A brainstorm, a windswept teeth. And I didn't get a great look at the other one. It may be an invigorate, though. Yeah, I like taking two here. Gives you the option to brainstorm and uh, shuffle away, which you need both cards to do while also giving you the opportunity next turn to potentially draw two off your Sylvan Library should it break that way. See, Giuliano's going to play a Windswept Teeth. He'll crack that right now because he'd like to get a look at three fresh cards off of this Brainstorm, it appears, as he falls down to four. So the idea of taking an additional card now off the Sylvan Library, well, that's off the table now that he's at four life. But here's a Brainstorm, and it's very clear that Giuliano's looking to go for the W here. So here's a Brainstorm. Draw three cards. Chris is going to have to put two back. He's put two back. He's got two Invigorates. I, I mean, I would imagine you want to go for it here. Here's the attack Exalted Triggers. Invigorate, that's one. Invigorate, that's two. Fabiano, you got anything? He's yeah! going for us, the Plowshares. And so. now things get quite bad for Giuliano. Yes, they do. The Snapcaster Mage is going to uh, theoretically trade with the Glistener Elf. Draw draws a removal spell. It's uh, a catastrophe for Giuliano. I, I think it might be a catastrophe. It is yep. a catastrophe. A Swords of Plowshares off the top now for Fabiano, too. is going to take care of the Glistener Elf. Now he's going to get the truck on in there with the Snapcaster Mage, and I'm not sure how Christopher Giuliano can win this game, and I'm going to just assume at this point that he cannot. Giuliano's going to get a little bit of life, of course, because Swords of Plowshares have killed some things. But he's given Gerard some life, all that stuff. They're getting their life total situated. But ultimately, Patrick, I don't think it's going to matter. Point of no return, I think. 
Uh, Julian is going to lose a ton of resources and lose a bunch of resources in subsequent turns. He can't still in library for extra cards at this point, so he's just getting to look at the top card every turn. Well, I'll stop you there. Really? Only because he, he is going to gain some life. I guess he, I suppose because he of the swords that have taken place. Yeah, but he's also going to be taking hits from the Snapcaster Mage. That too. is correct. That is correct. So he is up to 12. He will gain a little bit of life, so on and so forth. He's got a little bit more life to work with. And you see Fabiano's going to kill at least one Noble Hierarch here. And now yeah. Giuliano's going to use his Sylvan Library. I love that from Gerard. I, I think killing one Noble Hierarch to pin the man a little bit, but keeping one counter as insurance either to plus two plus through through a blocker or be able to interact inside of combat if Giuliano should happen to draw an infect creature plus a pump spell. I think that's a good way to split the difference. Looks like Fabiano is casting either a Ponder or a Brainstorm. We'll get an idea here. Looks like it's going to be a Ponder. Here's the attack with Snapcaster Mage wearing a Numazawa's Jite. And Fabiano says, I have no reason to activate or do anything. I'll just get my two charge counters. And Fabiano looks like he's going to be running away with this thing now. Remove a counter. Kill the Hierarch. Uh, it looks like Giuliano would like to sacrifice his fetch land. Gerard says, I'll respond. I'll sacrifice the fetch land. And Gerard might even have something like a stifle in hand here. Who knows? <laughs> Checking the list. He might just be shortcutting. And it looks like he is shortcutting. So Giuliano will get the opportunity to search up a little something, something here. But I don't really know how he's supposed to get himself back into this game at this point. He's got to kill Umazawa Chite first before anything even gets started here. All right, it's a Sylvan Library trigger. Take a look at a couple of cards, and we are all done. So, Gerard Fabiano with a timely source of plowshares. Going to win this game over Christopher Giuliano. Jeskai Stoneblade, in fact, they are all tied up. As you see the sideboards there again, Christopher taking a look at Timothy, seeing if he's able to get this game over Ingram. And you see Gerard, he's taking a look as well at his two teammates and Jordan Berkowitz and Peter Ingram. Again, Ingram coming off of a Grand Prix championship very recently, I believe, in Toronto. His first of what potentially could be many for his career. Worth noting that Gerard was pretty aggressive about uh, searching up dual lands. Leads me to believe he did not bring in the Blood Moons. He did search up pretty aggressively, now didn't he? curious to see as he looks like he's going back to the drawing board a little bit here. Giuliano does not appear to be. He looks happy enough with what he's got going on. So while they shuffle up and get ready here for game number three, game number two was certainly an, an entertaining one. We will talk about the StarCityGames.com newsletter one last time here this weekend. It's of course your source for Magic Gathering news and there's a lot going on there. We can post one every week and best of all, it's a super free. Well, a lot going on newsletter every week your source for Magic the Gathering news highlights from some of SCG's best articles upcoming SCG tour dates and locations plus you can find invitational qualifiers near you game nights near you possibility storm puzzle solutions but best of all signing up is free over at go.starcygames.com slash newsletter I love that in this promotion we have used that same image of Ross Miriam for almost a half decade <laughs> Look, there's new, there's new Aether Revolt cards. New Aether Revolt cards that revive old archetypes. That's Collected right. Company, Spell Queller. Look, are you saying we maybe need an update? Uh, I will read a sample line. And don't forget to check out Chaz Andrus' analysis of 2016 and his predictions for what the year holds in Magic in 2017, All right. which was last year. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll work on getting that updated. How about that? Yeah. Let's make a note. Let's make a note of that team. Let's update the newsletter graph. Get Let's that, make a note. Get that updated. Okay. Get that updated. A new picture. Uh, looks like maybe. Be better tomorrow. <laughs> be, be, <laughs> be better tomorrow. It's all right. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. One step at a time. There's only so much time in the day. Mm -hmm. Curious what's going on in that Volts Berkowitz match. Those two are just grinding away. 
Red Black Aggro versus Grixon Midrange. There's a lot of haymakers back and forth there, I'm sure. I like the change in body language and tone on Fabiano's team. Being down 0-1. In all three of your matches, is a little demoralizing. That's Ingram comes back. Nah. Fabiano wins a dramatic game, too. And you can see, you know, a little pep in their step. A little nah. bit more confidence there with Fabiano. It's just, it's just time to rally. It's just time to rally, man. That's all. Don't even rally. worry about it. It's rally time. Yeah. It's rally time. Anything can happen, so you rally. Don't worry about anything else. This player is going to. Oh, Patrick, you got to talk to your guy here. Gerard. Let me see what this is. Gerard is a, a thorough and passionate pile shuffler. Yeah. His excesses have been corralled a little bit with the changes to the rules. But he is still going to take his one pile shuffle per match. As is his right. Okay. Does it bother me? Of course. <laughs> but it's his prerogative. All right. I'm just making sure that you're aware of what's going down. I see it. Okay. I can't turn away. Big win for your Padres the other day, by the way. It was great. Happy for you. Try to go back to back a little, uh, you know. Would be a nice thing for me while in Philadelphia. I can't go to the game, unfortunately. Yeah, two wins in one day, that'd be a lot. That's that's a week's worth of wins. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Call that a winning streak. Yeah. Well, both players are going to take a look at their opening hand. Looks like Giuliano with a pretty quick keep. Fabiano, well, I'd say that body language means he's not so sure. Eh. Fabiano is... A thoughtful player. I like the stink face, though. <laughs> this is the smile trying to convince himself to keep. Been there. Been there. Uh, Volcanic Island Swords to Plow shares five expensive spells. Mm. Or some such. At least one, Jace. Hoping his teammates aren't looking. Hoping his teammates A can't see his hand. Got the batter skull in hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, confer now, now consulting with Peter. Peter almost certainly going to tell him the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feet are almost certainly going to tell him the mulligan. Yeah. Gerard trying to convince himself to keep. And we are re are we ready to go? Oof. No. Oh, wow. Lays it down. Wow. Lays it down. Wow. It is historically. I mean, it's the part of Gerard's game that I think uh, he's tightened up the most over the years. His aversion to mulliganing was almost parody level at various points. I think that element of his game is, is overstated now. I think he's a pretty reasonable mulliganer at these I days. I think it's gotten better. It's got, it's, it couldn't have gotten worse. That's it is, true. That's it's true. definitely gotten better. I, I think his instincts are just pretty. I mean, he probably mulligans slightly less than your average pro-level player, but not unreasonably so. Peter, Peter furrowing his brow looking at that hand was, yeah. was great. was great. Was the great. Gerard, I believe, was either the inventor or the inspiration for the Six Forest Dawn Elemental opening hand captioned, I'd rather lose than Mulligan. That's correct. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> Looks like Timothy Giuliano with Mono Green Tron takes care of Peter Ingram. Two games to one. He got the job done. In many ways, Magic's first meme. <laughs> <laughs> so the team of Giuliano, Giuliano, and Volts, they're up a match looking for just one more. I felt like that was a pretty good matchup there for Timothy Giuliano. Mono Green yes. Tron looking to prey on those control decks and able to do so. Here's a ponder from Fabiano. And you never know, Giuliano could have him dead on the second turn of the game. We've seen it before. A little Invigorate Berserk action. It doesn't take much. No, you can, you can get killed on turn two. It's not as common as it used to be, but it still comes up. Fabiano going to shuffle with his ponder. Now, now, presumably, Fabiano has a little bit of defense in one of those two dazes and maybe a force of will, but there's no guarantee of that either. No. So, Giuliano, you saw him go for it in the last game, and I think he should have. Just turned out Gerard's last card was very good. Yeah, well, he was facing down Umazawa's Jitte the following turn, which he had no recourse to. So, you, it's only going to get worse. That's your best shot to go for it there. Fabiano down to one card in hand. 
Got to go for it there. Just have to. I don't mind it. Giuliano going to play a misty rainforest. You know what card's not okay is Gataxian Probe. That's I've no been thinking, I've been sort of just running through my head every single turn that we played if Giuliano had Gataxian Probe. No. We'd be already uh, on to the semifinals. It'd be done. <laughs> We'd be done. It'd be done already. Here's a ponder. It's a very powerful magic card. It's not okay. That card's not okay. It doesn't okay. seem like it'd be powerful, Gataxian Probe, until you actually play with it. When they printed that card, I thought it was going to be unplayed and terrible, and I was very wrong. Just one. That would be I, – I don't have a lot of requests in terms of compilations of, of commentary. I would really like one of me making fun of people for not playing with the card shortly after it was printed. I actually was trying to see if we could make one of all your Philly beats <laughs> Oh yeah. over the years, like yeah. the robot that they destroyed. Oh, uh, Hit Hitchbot. Yeah. They – they didn't. They tortured a hitchhiking robot. That's that's correct. It was his arms and legs were ripped off. That's correct. I was I was curious if we were ever gonna, ever going to be able to find a lot of clips. That's a lot of stuff to go through, though. Yeah, and that happens not just in the Philadelphia shows, but all of them. Right. I, so. You know, my appetite for being pelted with D cell batteries is low, so I'd prefer to not have that sort of thing circulating the internet. Sure, but. sure. Would make for a great imager post. Yeah. Fabio is going to start off his turn with a brainstorm. <laughs> a couple of cards going to go back here for Gerard. And there's a Tundra. We'll head back over to Giuliano, who says, all right, attack my two knuckleheads. How about that? Fabiano, no response. Yeah. Do your thing. Not trying to engage with these threats inside of combat. Doesn't want to put the shields down. If Giuliano's passing, Fabiano's happy to pass, too. There's an inflict in Ink Moth Nexus. Excuse me. And it's this plan, the plan in this game could be for Giuliano, just nickel and dime you. No well, pump spell you. It's a nice way to play Infect against decks with a lot of removal, a lot of cheap interaction. It's just little chips here and there. Get them inside a range where finally they are forced to act inside of combat. And then your fluster storms, your pump spells, you can bring them to bear. Whoo! Terminus is a good card. Never mind. Terminus may have been a great card. But we won't know because Matthew Voltz wins the match over Jordan Berkowitz two games to zero. And that is going to do it as the team of Christopher Giuliano, Timothy Giuliano.